Ah, it is amazing. It is amazing what we can do when we <laughs> sing and start Black History Month. It is February, ladies and gentlemen. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Well, I got an exciting guest coming up. And then, of course, we're getting geared up for the Super Bowl and beyond. It is another edition of what? Interludes Extra Talk on Tuesdays. And like I said, I am so grateful to be here. I'm Val The Voice Johnson. And we are getting ready to get going as we are. And I'm telling you, man, I'm excited to be here. You know, and then also... What else I got going on? There's a lot going on. And I have to talk. We're going to talk Grammys and Hollywood. We're just going to be all, all up and through Hollywood. I'm, I'm, I'm loving that. I love that. <laughs> all right, guys, here we go. And let us know that you're in the chat. Let's go. Val the Voice Johnson, ready to get ready to go with you with another edition of Talk on Tuesdays. It's me and Coach Tony, and I got to tell you guys, we are excited about tonight's episode. And definitely, guys, join us over on Patreon. It's called Find Your Voice. Join our community on Patreon today, and that's at patreon.com forward slash interludes. And then, of course, your girl here has stepped into authorship. That's right. Like my queen, Michelle Obama. I'm writing a book that won a Grammy, by the way, this past Sunday. But yes, a DJ saved my life. I've had some wonderful training and coaching from a very wonderful person. Her name is Monique Lisa. And so this is the new book, the new ebook that's released, releasing March 5th. Go ahead and hit the scan. You take your phone and you can scan the scan the scan the QR code and go ahead and a DJ saved my life. It is my own personal testimony and story of how the podcast and DJing, my love of music, helped save my life in a transitional period of unfortunately of loss and gaining some creative endeavors. Man, oh man, I'm so excited that you guys are here. My goodness, my goodness. So yep, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Man, who is in the building today? And I'm talking virtual building. I thought I saw just before I went, I see Queen Lakeisha. How are you? Good to see you. Of course, and of course, Mr. Springer, thank you so very much. He's one of the best moderators here on Clubhouse. Thank you so much for putting that information in the chat for me. If you're here, do like Lakeisha and Kevin and let me know that you're here. Man, oh man. Now, here's my question. I know we're two days out from it, but did anyone watch the Grammys? Did anyone check that out? Because I was watching the Grammys and I was thinking to myself, I thought Trevor Noah did a excellent job in hosting. I believe this is either her second or third year hosting. So he has been doing his thing. It's the 66th annual Grammy Awards. And I have to say the award shows, sometimes they can be boring, but a lot of times they can be great. And that's what I'm very, very excited about. Let me go ahead and, and see what I have here. Oh my gosh. I was chatting a lot on the Facebook group. I guess you guys check that out with me going what I do. And yeah, there's Trevor doing his thing. Uh, I like to call it best hosting. Crack some great jokes and all the rest of that. So that was always fun. But some of the big winners of the night, Taylor Swift, of course, her name keeps coming up. 
I have to tell you guys, the, uh, the, um, Kingsley, Mr. Kingsley and Mr. Marley, they have a great film that's coming out exactly one week and a day from that one love. And that's Bob Marley. It was fun that Trevor was going around to different tables and having wonderful conversations. So they were there to pr promote the movie. And that young, young man there in the green will be portraying who? Bob Marley. I saw the previews months ago and was like, I cannot wait for this film to come out. So obviously One Love is going to come out on February 14th. Miley Cyrus released this song last year called Flowers. It ended up winning two Grammys on Sunday. She ended up performing, doing a really great job. Oh my gosh. And, and I have to say this for the former Hannah Montana star, that's where I know her from. She's grown up out of, in front of many of our eyes. But then I was thinking this was the first song that I really liked from her and that really resonated from her. Uh, Lionel Richie, of course, presenting Song of the Year uh, to Billie Eilish. That came from one of the, the Barbie soundtrack. That's also up for best song for Oscar. So Billie might win again for, for the Oscar. We're not sure. And then, of course, Best New Artist, uh, that is Victoria Monet. I, I've never heard of this young lady, but she says she's been independently pushing it since 2009. And so this was a big win for her. And so, you know, there's a there's a lot of it was a jazz artist that won for last year. But there was a lot of other things that happened. Um uh, I'm, why am I forgetting his name right now? It should be in front of front of my face. Um, Killer Mike won three awards, but unfortunately some things happened with him. And I, I was wish I had the pictures to kind of show it, but he won all of his rap categories, but something happened before the awards and they ended up arresting him, which I thought was really bad. But the good thing is, is that things have been resolved. He's, he's, he's out of jail, but he unfortunately missed the rest of the, the award shows. Cause there was kind of a pre-award show. And then there was the main awards that happened. Um, and then here's Miley winning for uh, record of the year, which is, which is really huge flowers. Um, there was a whole thing about uh, who is this? Celine Dion. She appeared on and, and, and presented the award to, album of the year to Tra Taylor Swift. She didn't really acknowledge her when she got the award. It was just a whole bunch of, bunch of things, but I love these award shows because I don't know. It kind of highlights what people consider big and best, but I have to talk about another presenter that happened, but I'll do that with our guests. My goodness, my goodness. But that was the, the 66th annual Grammy Awards. And I don't know if you guys got a chance to see it, but I checked it out, was having a good time and just laughing about everything. Well, not everything, but there were some great great moments, very great moments. Uh, uh, Joni Mitchell performed. We hadn't seen her in some, some years and that was, she had a very diverse band around her. And then also another, uh, there were great tributes that happened. Um, I believe it was Fantasia Barino. They had Oprah Winfrey introducing her and she did a wonderful tribute to Tina Turner. And then of course, uh, John Baptiste and Oh, Jimmy Jam. He was on the er on earlier and also Ann Nesby from Sounds of Blackness uh, with a great choir behind them. So, you know, it's always tough to do memoriam in memoriam of, you know, acknowledging the musicians and music execs that they've lost over the year. But when you do it with class and you try to wrap it up with a lot of, you know, good solid performances and and Lennox from the Eurythmics uh, performing with Wendy and Lisa, you know, those names, former musicians with Prince and the revolution. So it was really good to see all of these great performances. So I, I was, I was just really touched by all that I saw. And like I said, I cover these things every year. And I know some people are like, ah, we don't care about the awards, but I like them. It's fun to it, it's fun to see what they're gonna do and what people are wearing. I, I wish I was more into fashion because people were like, oh, I, oh, this person wore Valentino and this person wore, wore Gucci. That's not my lane. I just want to hear the good music. <laughs> um, my writing mentor. I have to let you guys know for a DJ Save My Life. I got introduced to her on a different app 
And then, of course, there is an entire community of creatives. One of the creatives that I got a chance to meet uh, probably well over a year ago was this young lady who I'm about to bring up. I cannot say enough good, nice things about our guest on tonight. Many of the wonderful music guests, as well as our, our former NBA two-time person, that would be Terry Cummings, uh, she was has been kind of behind the scenes uh, helping and kind of giving me some great advice regarding this particular show. And then this is someone that has worked in Hollywood. And when I say worked, I mean well over 100 films and television shows. She's either done stunt coordinating, acting in the background, or doing stunts. Oh, my gosh. And it's Black History Month, so I love talking to people who are living history, like giving great advice, letting people know if you want to get in this business, this is how you do it. This is how you go about it. This is how you act while you're on set. You know, don't draw too much attention to yourself. These, This is sage advice. And so when I speak of this person and I, I asked her to come on the show, I said, we're, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about all of the great things that you have done. Coach Tony, he is here. He's adjusting himself. I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring, him, uh, bring him back up. But Tony is coming back. But we're going to be bringing on Miss April Whedon White. Grand rising to you. Here she is. We'd have to bring her on. Here she is. Oh. Hello, hello. Hey, hello, what's up? April. Hi there. Good evening. Good evening. Hey. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing good. Happy to be here with you. I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Getting some love in the chat already from Linda. <laughs> hey, Linda. Hi. I enjoyed you this morning on Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I I did a lot of research on it's a lot of the stuff that you've done. I don't I don't know where to begin. I it, it for me when I think about working in Hollywood a lot of things that come to my mind is how do you protect yourself from getting sucked into whatever the crazy that happens like when you started, like, let's let's go there first. When you sure. first started, what was kind of the first, what was the things that attracted you to working in Hollywood, number one? What attracted you to working in, in oh, Hollywood? I've been in the entertainment field since I was three years old. Wow. Um, purchased a car from my mother at the age of, I think it was four. Uh, it was a Mattel toy commercial. And so oh. this is something that I've been doing for a long time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that means that means a parent was involved in getting yeah. you involved at that time. Oh, wow. She me in dance, ballet, jazz, modern, hip hop. And she was a black history buff. Happy Black History Month, everybody. And so I just had the best of all worlds when it came to her. She was an educator. My mama, rest in peace, Thelma Wheaton. So she oh. introduced me mm -hmm. and then plays and taking to me, you know, taking me to auditions. And it, she was just phenomenal. Yeah. And, and, and I, and I, here's the thing when you're a child, I guess when I think about uh, actors, espe mm -hmm. especially moms and actors, the, the mom, the mom and the daughter combos that come to mind is Kim Fields, Chip Hurd. Oh yeah. Um, I, I yeah. actually worked at Chip Fields acting school and that's where I caught the bug. LaFay Baker had come to speak. And I was like, I could do stunts. She was talking about stunts. I was like, I could do that. And then one thing just led to another, but Chip Field is amazing. Yes. That's a mother, Holly Robinson, Pete. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, these are the folks that come to my mind. And then of course, uh, Brandy Norwood oh, yes. and her yes. mom, yes. you know, very protective. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you get mm -hmm. your kid involved in to, to Hollywood, but then it's a matter of just being like this up, oh, let me protect you. Hands on <laughs> at all times. You're not going in that room. No, I, and if that, and if she goes, I'm going to. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so the in transition out sounds like it was, it was at the, at the genesis of everything. It sounds like it was 
dance. It was mm-hmm. doing acting. some commercials, a little Same and acting, thing. but stunts. That's the wow. thing. Where did that start? Well, I was working on Presidio with Sean Connery. I was doing background work and I was making like three, five, three to five thousand dollars a week back then. I was all about my business, and that's how I feel that this field is. It's all about business. And so I was doing background work. It was dark. It was late. The stunt man came up to me, Benny Moore, and he said, Hey, you think maybe you want to do the stunt with us? I said, sure. So he got me on. I sat in the Ferris wheel and he said, don't worry if the camera falls. It's okay. Don't worry about it. I was like, really? Okay. All right, cool. You're going to protect me. All right. I get paid. Cool. So we're up there on the Ferris wheel. Sure enough, while we look up and the camera fell. So that was my introduction at first 10 years, you know, moving into the next decade, my photo set on several tables. So don't ever give up. It's set on like in people's offices for like 10 years and no one called me to do stunts. And wow. yeah, so that's how it kind of started was with Benny Moore. And then I met William Washington, who was my ex-husband, rest in peace. He just passed away uh, last year. Uh, mm-hmm. I met him and I just stopped doing dancing, singing, acting and everything, modeling, whatever, traveling. And he said, if you stick with one thing, just stick with one thing, you'll be a success at that and everything else will follow. You'll be able to act, sing, dance, choreograph, do whatever it is that you want. And he trained me. I ride horses. I'm scuba certified. Uh, I know I my career, I actually started as a stunt coordinator, he demanded that I start as a stunt coordinator. Now I understand why, (laughs) Um, (laughs) because I'm stunt coordinator. But yeah, he, ah, I owe him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is, this, this is Mr. Washington's who got you into doing stunts and a lot of the everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I'm assuming with, with definitely doing stunts, you've got to stay in shape. Like how often, how much are you working out? How much were you working out at that time? Every day, twice to four times a day in different categories. It wasn't just one thing. It could be rowing. It could be boating. It could be surfing. It could be whatever you have to know, learning about cars. I have an extensive uh, driving background. Lori and Rick Seaman taught me. Wally Crowder, who is my god daddy, he taught me. And then uh, William, of course, taught me and uh, several others. And I was on a driving team and my name was Fire. Yes, that was my name. <laughs> oh my gosh, Fire. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I made a lot of money driving in commercials. It was an amazing time, honey. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I at one of your other I now I was a fan of this particular show. I was sure. I was a fan of this particular show and I'm going to go ahead and show this. Okay. But and I'm going to bring on Tony in like okay. one uh, one minute now, but Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Wow. I didn't know I was looking at you when I was watching this show back back when, but it's yeah. a lot you don't know about me, Val. <laughs> That's why I need to write the book Monique Lisa's been helping me, but oh Lord Jesus. But yes, that's Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and I played Nikki the Subway Slayer. And James Marston, he mm-hmm. still to this day keeps in touch with me. He's so nice. Not mm-hmm. once did we feel bad grabbing each other, hurting each other, throwing each other, because we just had a good time. And uh, it was just an amazing time. John Medlin was the stunt coordinator, and mm-hmm. I was fighting Hong Kong style. And this guy that I was doing stunts with, no names mentioned, he kept grabbing me and doing it a little bit too hard. I said, we're <laughs> not in Hong Kong. <laughs> I said, we're not in Hong Kong. We are in America. And if you don't stop, I'm calling my sensei, honey. He kept on. I called my sensei. And when he came, he said, oh, I'm sorry. I, was, I said, yeah, that's what I thought. And so anyway, <laughs> you're the first to hear that story. So, wow. so anyway. As we went on with the fight, I had to put his head through the glass. Ah, uh, yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. And and here's the thing, for one of the one of the interviews that I remember seeing, you when stunts are done, you it's one take. Is it's little takes. It shouldn't do a bunch of takes. As anybody that I work with, everyone that I mentor, I tell mm-hmm. them, you don't need to keep doing it over and over again. You know, mm-hmm. what I'm saying, uh, do it 
sell out so hard. We call it selling out when you go hard, sell out so hard that you only need one take unless you're doing a master and you're doing like a couple of other, you know, uh, camera angles and stuff. And there's not a lot of cameras, but mm -hmm. yeah, one take is usually enough. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I want to make sure I bring in my co-host here. I think he is ready. I don't know why he's got on shades. I don't know what, why we have oh, shades hi. on. Hi. I don't know what's going on. How you doing? Like hi, coach. I'm just chilling. I see. <laughs> <laughs> you chilling hard. Like we say in the you chilling hard. Oh. Hey, the funny part about it, April, I'm still stuck on fire. I, I, I got that Ohio player. Um, okay. Boom, boom, boom. When you walk. Yeah, talk. See, that's what I'm talking. I'm still got that in my mind. Come on now. Yeah, I was fire. I was known as fire on the driving team. We did. I'm just glad we sit in your. I'm glad we see your press. The way you talk, I got a position for you as assistant coach. I need some of that now. Mm, we don't have to talk. I need to come to Tennessee, so we don't have to talk. I'm telling you. Now, What's up, tell, battle, us, boys? tell us about her. Oh, that's Another Lafay Baker. Lafay that's Baker. my mentor. Mm -hmm. And she has an organization called Diamond in the Raw. And I would always go and speak for her. And she taught me a lot. She whispered little things in my ear that I needed to know as a lady. And she was a constant reminder of me being and staying a lady. And not mm -hmm. only that, I have the utmost respect for her. The respect that I have for her is that she is inclusive. She includes others. And so... That's where my respect comes in the story is, like I said earlier, Chip Fields, she came to speak. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I could do stunts. And then we just became mentor and mentee. And here we are today. Yeah. And, and and coach, like I, such a, a illustrious career in stunts <laughs> and definitely just kind of that. I didn't know that her her photo sat on desk for over Oh. 10 years, nobody was calling her. Uh, Never for, give up. That's, that's what, that's Never what it's called staying under the radar. Ne that's, what I, that's what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> Sometimes, pal, you ain't got to be the loudest one in the room to be heard. That's right. Mm -hmm. And when it's your turn, what's going what's gonna to happen? It's going to be what? Your it's going to be like a brother at smoking a cigarette at a gas station. Boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Recently, hey, Martha, what, what I get you know, the question I got leading off with Val asked a moment ago, which is amazing. We talked about, you know, uh, discussing about the going hard, the first take and all that. And looking at the part of the industry that you were in, yes. you know, what do you think or how do you feel that young black African-American men or women mm -hmm. haven't went down that road to like, or why haven't they glamorized being a stunt double, because obviously, and the reason why I say that is, me and Val was talking about the Eddie Murphy Christmas movie, right? Oh, and yeah. um, and uh, they were talking to uh, DC Youngfly. He said Eddie Murphy was only on the set for like thirty minutes for the whole movie. That's a double that people didn't know. He yes. come on, does it take? If it take Eddie twenty minutes, Eddie gone the rest of the day. Yes, so, yes. looking at that, what's wh why didn't you think that we as a uh, people try to go in or get into the industry, you know, in, in that direction. I believe it's because we don't know about it. And I believe that it's not something that's talked about. You just know that there are stunt doubles. You know that there are stunt coordinators. You know that there are safety people. But if there's no one giving you an opportunity or no one telling you where to go to get that type of information, you know, and if someone's not putting that spark, like a spark was came to me, you know, when I heard it at acting school, I'm like, wow, what? You make how much? You do? Oh, I could, mm -hmm. yeah, let's do that. My acting career, you know, yeah, that can wait for a minute. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's information. I think like a lot of college football players and soccer players, athletes, and that's your lane, Coach Tony. This is actually a profession that they can transition into. Like I mentor a young man named Christian Wise. He's in Las Vegas, Nevada, and he does all kind of uh, football and baseball, all kind of stunts like that. Yeah. And he's an actor. I think it's mm -hmm. that you've got to be in a position where someone's going to take you on and mentor you. But to all of like the college track, everybody that's like athletic, 
man, stunts is the way to go. Wow. It, it, it's it's a, a huge adrenaline rush. You're already coming off of an adrenaline rush. You right. know, and you can actually, do, it's something that you can actually do while you're in college, it, it, you know. Yeah, so. Yeah, and what, and that advice would, to anyone that's interested in doing stunts, mm -hmm. especially female, like it, I feel like that's, I, I think some women think, well, there aren't women that do stunts. It's probably just men. And at, no. at one point right. there was just, there was no black people doing any stunts. Right. And they were doing right. paint downs where they would take someone mm -hmm. uh, Caucasian or, you know, another race and paint them down to be black. You know? Right. I've seen that before. Yeah. yeah. And I know, and, uh, um, the, your boy, the, 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 the Damon Waymans and his brothers, you know, he's do that just making skits of it Hilarious. all the time. But oh, that is so, especially doing like the old Hollywood Bruce Lee type movies and things of that nature. Oh, yeah. And Big you know time. what? For me, I think education pushed me further in my uh, career because I knew how to talk. I knew how to work in certain situations. I had already been exposed to every nationality you could possibly think of. So when I got in the industry, it wasn't just, I'm that black girl. No, it was, she's educated. She speaks well. She knows what she's doing. Oh, there I am, barrel racing. Yes, that's my horse, Freckles. Barrel oh, racing. Oh, really? I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. usually put $2 on. Yeah, well, you should have. And um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is at the Bill, is this one at the Bill Pickett Rodeo? No, that's at a different rodeo. Yeah, I used to do the nice. Bill Pickett rodeo every year. Oh, you guys see, uh, Val, we didn't tell us you were talented too. Um, the the it just it just keeps coming. It just keeps coming. But recently, she was honored uh, nah, last okay. last you. fall. Oh, yeah. that's they don't tip their hat off on that one. That's nice. Thank mm -hmm. you. So uh, that's this, so. Being on that situation, that's that's that, that that alludes me to this, April. You you know, we've just came off that long, long wait, SGA actors, actresses. Yes. So and they went on strike based mm -hmm. on AI generated, you know, different things of that nature. You are a old school actress who also got an opportunity to bring it to where we are today. Yes. Looking at now they're using AI so much to do movies, different things of that nature. How do you think, do you think that this contract that they were able to get over uh, and make sure they kind of get the AI out of it, do you think, or, or the question would be, how long do you think that, that they're going to have the opportunity to move forward before they start using AI technologies? You know, it's already being startup? used. It's already being used. It's been being okay. used. Yeah. And just like with green, sorry to cut you off, were you done? Yeah. Oh, with green screen, uh, you know, CGI and all the like, please, honey, we're going to use AI to our advantage. Those of us that know that this is where we're going, the technology we're going to and through. Look at motion cap, mocap, right. huge, huge. If you can get you some mocap jobs right now, come on. AI has been being used for years. They're going to need us in a... Uh, all those games, shoot them up, bang, bang, SWAT, cars driving and all like that. They still don't need them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In my India. Ah. And, and, and here's the thing. The... <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I feel just, like, I, I feel like no matter how big the, or how, uh, what do you call it? How great the technology is, it's yeah. never going to mimic well enough a human. I just, I'm right. so And you know what, sorry. Coach Tony, you're a coach. What you think you will be when you step out on that court, that's what you're going to be, what you think. Mm -hmm. So that's how I feel about AI. We have wonderful Fran Drescher. She's not playing. She's a gangster. She's going <laughs> to get what we want. And uh, Duncan Crabtree, real talk. We have oh, a new Duncan lawyer Crabtree. at the Screen Actors Guild. So we are good. Wow. That's how I feel. That's just April's opinion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, it's, it's you know, it's amazing, and I think what Val was saying there as well. You know, it is is AI is everywhere, music, everywhere, right? everywhere. Now in movies, and there's writing financial. And I'm gonna tell you how bad this thing is. <laughs> I ain't joking. Val and I was sitting down working on my bio, 
So we ah. put this together, Val, about what, about a, about a little over an hour or something, Val. Yeah. And this whole yeah. eye rolled in the face. I'm like, Ooh. man, I need is to. Is that man. you? You said, is that I me? Need- yeah, I'm like, I, need, I, need, I need to put the AI in my passenger seat to start riding around with it or something. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> Same. Oh, uh, now, now this is this is the fun thing with doing the research about all that April has done. I could pretty much think of any actress, any Hollywood actress, black actress that I've I've loved, <laughs> and she has possibly done stunts for them. One of my favorite films that I think about is the one with Gabrielle Union and mm-hmm. LL Cool J. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. I played a cop. Know? I was a cop. I was the one that was on the horse riding. Oh, uh, 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 what's that? Uh, Eva? Uh, yeah, yeah, Deliver Us from Eva. Eva. Yes, deliver us from Eva. That was why. That was one of my favorites. <laughs> I was five months pregnant. My boots you were not. barely fit. I was supposed wow. to do the writing scene, but I turned it over to Minerva Adams because I couldn't do it. So the director was like, oh, you know, and the stunt coordinator was like, we'll give you, you could be on the horse. So I was on the horse. I had to cut my boots open really? because I had started gaining weight. Oh, and okay. I was five months pregnant, y'all. Mm. Yeah, I was five months hey, pregnant. That, that, that girl was working. <laughs> she was working. <laughs> I had no days off, Coach Tony. You hear me? None. Hey, here we go. Here we go now. And yeah. so the picture to the right looks like you're, um, you're, I, I guess, a cop or what? What? What is the the outfit that I'm looking? I at? I was a marshal. Yeah, a cop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was doing and some stunt driving for Ben Scott. Wow. Yeah. Justified. That was the name of that TV show. Oh, yeah. Justified. I remember, you remember Justified. that show. I remember Justified. Mm-hmm. You know what? Sometimes they take us in places that y'all don't want to go. I'm telling you, man. Because we was out in the boondocks. You hear me? Hear me clearly. Like you for real, like for dogs. real, for real. Okay. Quiet for real mosquitoes. Right. Now here's a here's a very good question from Linda. She's asking, have you ever experienced a near-death experience of as course. a stunt woman? Most definitely. Oh. Every stunt person mm-hmm. does. If you're at the level that you're jumping off buildings, getting set on fire, crashing cars, fighting in bathrooms that have, you know, porcelain. Yeah, most definitely. And the most uh, death-defying thing that ever happened to me was in 2014 when I got injured and I fell five feet in the air flat on my face. Ooh. And um, another time was, I'm not going to tell you everything because it's got to be in a book. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then the other time, but you know I love you, Val. So I'm I'm giving out little nuggets for you. Hey, a little nugget. Y'all better, y'all better, better, time, y'all better get huh, y'all what bags. What you say, Coach? I said they better get out that that, that uh, Halloween bag. They better get them bags. You put them nuggets in there. Right. Okay. And Linda, I love you. I took a writing class with her, and so she was mm-hmm. she was able to sit in when I took it. But anyway, the second time, Miss Linda, that I was injured, and oh, thank you, Jesus, it was the last. Well, before that last. Huh, was on eraser. All four chains were supposed to explode. I was doubling Vanessa Williams. All four chains did not explode. And uh, yeah, mm-hmm. that part, I, yeah. And uh, they brought in one of my best friends, Barbara Lee Belmonte. She doubles Halle Berry, looks just mm-hmm. like her. So we used to trade off, you know, stunt coordinating different people. And they brought her in and I, I pulled her to the side. I was like, girl, I'm finishing this film. And she was like, you <laughs> are? I told the coordinator, I said, I can do this. I took my cast off. I sold that thing off and finished that film. I was like, I did not come this far in stunts, Mm -hmm. doubling Vanessa Williams. And I got this little bitty injury. To me, it was little bitty, even though thousand pound uh, chains were hitting me in the head. Remember that scene when Vanessa Williams? Yes. Well, those chains were hitting me in the head and um, not the head, but that my head and, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it was dark, and all I could see was lights and everything. I'm like, Ooh. and finally, I just passed out. Hey, I, what? And I, can I say this? The yes. power of prayer, okay, as a professional stunt person, is very, and all jokes aside, prayer. Because mm-hmm. myself and James Con stunt double, we prayed before we did that stunt. And and the other time, I had Bishop George Dallas McKinney pray for me. Before I went on the set, so yeah. Woo! Oh my gosh! Yeah, that part. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, that's Linda's that's saying, that's "Oh amazing. wow, I'm so glad you got through that experience. You are my shero." <laughs> well, that's uh, 
that's uh, amazing. You know, I was going to ask a question of that because you know, you're looking at the dangerous part of being a stunt person. So, you know, we're just coming off of Baldwin, right, on the accident of the shooting oh, and all no. that. And I was gonna, and yeah, and I was going to ask you, you know, as you're doing these stunts, how often do you as the person say, hey, you know something, let me let me check that tire on that car because I know the, the tire is supposed to blow out. Well, as a stunt sure, coordinator, yeah. I check everything. Okay. I check everything. Okay. And then there's usually a crew. You have a pit crew. You have a crew. And then your stunt performers, you know them. And after a while, you start hiring the same people because they know you, you know them, you know their talent. Yeah. And uh, I was really thrown aback when that happened to, to Alec. I was, oh, yeah, I was, I was working on uh, Mark Wahlberg's film okay. in Las Vegas, and it started snowing. Wow. But when we got our weapons, I played a SWAT officer. And when we got our weapons, guess what it said on the side of the armory box? What's that? Rust. Be careful. Rust. Alec Baldwin fell. That was the, those were the weapons I was supposed to go to. Oh boy. So yeah. I had an AK 47, I had a Magnum, and a 45 that I had to work with that day. I, and uh, here's my I'm very safe, y'all. Whenever I have my sets, I have safety meetings. Oh, wonderful. Sure. Oh, that's good. That's good. And really, and very quickly, let me jump in here real quick. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been that stunt where you said, no? That, oh, yes. That, Most no, definitely. I'm not, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I thought it was going to end my career. I was brand new in the mm -hmm. industry, y'all. I had to take a deep breath on that one. And yeah. I just knew that my career was going to go nowhere but oh, God. God. Mm -hmm. Regina King, I was stunt doubling her. We were friends and I was stunt doubling her. And then I was also doubling Lynn Whitfield. You know what film that was? Come on, bow the boys. You know what, what film that was? Uh, that probably was, uh, it's a thin line between love and hate. Yes. Okay. So wow. I was working on that and it was the pool wow. scene where she gets out the window while well, I did the part that goes out the window, but I heard the Holy Spirit say, don't do the stunt. I was like, huh? I was looking around. Don't, don't you'll you'll die. I said, and I'm looking like this, like what is happening right now? Wow. And I thought something. I was like, what is going? I went to Regina. I had tears all down my face. I'm talking. My whole shirt was wet. I'm not exaggerating. I remember it like it was yesterday because we were in Malibu, Malibu filming. Honey, I got to her and I said, Regina, I'm so sorry. I can't. You know, it was real tears, of course. And mm -hmm. uh, I didn't do it. And my career did this after that. I just, I, something just wasn't right. And I could do that stunt in my sleep. Something yeah. Cause when I, when I think about that, that's kind of the climactic part of that whole film. Cause yeah. that's when, you know, yeah. it, you know, the <laughs> I've had the opportunity to work with Lynn Whitfield and I think that she should direct more. She's an amazing director. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She, oh, she's, definitely, like she's the bomb. Yeah. I she, love her. I think she got a chance to do. I I loved her in the in the series that came on own called Greenleaf. Yes, and I think course. she got a chance to yeah, do. Greenleaf, we talked about that. A couple of directing, yes. a couple of director yes. things for that. But Tony, I'm coach. You had another question oh, for me. No, April. I was gonna say yeah. That's that. And then, like I said, remember we talked about it. My nephew's on a spinoff of the Greenleaf show that's going to be oh. coming. So I got to let you know about that. That's going to be exciting. What I was going to just say was an extension of what you were already talking about, April. When you when you're looking at that, do you think that the dangers of the stunt side of the business is what kind of pushes a lot of the actresses away? Because you know, because now we got a lot of prissy people, right? A lot of pretty prissy people, and all that. Well, thing, so. I I, I believe that any time that there is a stunt involved as an actor to save production, I, I personally would prefer having a stunt double for for um, for my actors. As a producer, I, I produce because you have to shut production down. Look at, um, I think someone just got injured in Africa recently. They had to shut production down. Yeah. Wow. I can't give spoiler alerts. That's why I was like, Woo. Yeah. <laughs> I just need you to do me one favor. Yeah. I need for you to give me a stunt double or let me be the stunt double for the next person that win the Powerball. And yeah. so I get the real ticket. <laughs> and they just get, you know what I'm saying? I just double the stunt to get the ticket. But I promise, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to always break you off. You know? 
I got you. I just want my 10%. Is that what they get now? How much they get now? 20? <laughs> yeah, about 20 right now. About 20. Okay, 20. Inflation. 20. Exactly. So, but I have I, a, I, we, have a we have a question from Mark. And the, and Mark Lee's in the in the chat. He's like, "What do you uh, think up, of Mark? indie films that try stunts? Some filmmakers are not ready for stunts. What do you think about that? Your thoughts on that? Um, what do you think of indie films that try stunts? Mm -hmm. Sometimes filmmakers are not ready for stunts. Mm. Uh, that's a loaded question because." Why are you doing a stunt film if you're not ready? Oh, that's, well, I can see one, April. So have you seen that movie, Gran Turismo? No. So I can see where Mark is going with that. When, you, when that movie, so that movie was a true movie about the African-American from London who became the phenomenal um, um, uh, indie rider. So, ah, you know, so okay. You hired and that car slipped up and burned up and blew up and all this stuff like that. So I can you, see where he's going with that. Well, they can hire uh, a stunt coordinator, somebody who 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 knows what they're doing. Yeah, do that. I mentor okay. several up and coming uh, stunt coordinators. Oh wow! Right. And and here's a here's a question that's uh, from on stage V. A VP. Oh, this is great. Tom Cruise does his own stunts. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit isn't dropping him at any time, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> he could die. <laughs> Lee Mazur's played a stuntman on The Fall Guy and start as a stuntman. What are your thoughts? Oh, I think that's amazing. You know, those guys were something special like Prince. I've seen him, you know, our, you know, Prince perform. No one's like him. And it's mm -hmm. like, there are some stunt performers, there's no one like them that do their own, you know, the actors that do their own stunts is what I'm trying to say. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's awesome that they've done their own stunts. However, make sure you're ready to do something like that because it ends up, unless you go put your own money in production, it ends up holding up production. That's just my opinion. But okay. I, don't think, I don't think they make actors with all respect, the way that they used to, right. you know, Michael Jai White, he's a perfect example of someone that can do some of his own stunts, especially the fighting stunts. You know what I'm saying? But he has common enough sense to know when he needs a stunt double. Uh, the indie thing, it's it's about community. There we go again, Val. It's about mm -hmm. community and networking. So that's my answer. I hope I answered good. No, you you answered you answered you answered quickly. I want to go back to the HAP awards that you mm -hmm. won. You got a you won a trailblazing award back in October of last year. What the HAPA did it mean? awards? I'm sorry, HAPA. Uh huh. Okay. What did it mean to win this award, and how? How were you voted on? How did they come to to how did you come to their attention? Well, they've been wanting to give me an honor for several years now. And a friend of mine is one of the producers, Amber Washington. And so I guess it was just the right time seeing that William, my ex-husband, had passed away. They gave him one as well. And then my daughter was able to accept the award for her father. And mm -hmm. so I think it was timing. But the Hoppo Awards is absolutely amazing because it bridges the gap between Hollywood and Africa. So you have the opportunity to meet people from Africa and network. And uh, it, it's just an amazing experience. And it was a two day event uh, that I went to, but there were events the whole time. So it, it was an honor. And I'm just thankful. Yeah. And grateful. Wow. And, and I know, Coach. I'm I'm telling you, this this is and here, Mark is coming up with some really great questions. Hi, um, Mark. <laughs> hey, Mark, man, I can't wait it? to work with you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> What's the stunt that you wish that that's on your wish list to do? You know, some people want to hang off planes, others want to right, do. Hey guys, cliff I want to jump off a cliff <laughs> in the water. There's nothing I haven't done that I want to do. Right now, oh. all I want to do is be thankful for the career that I've had um, and pass down my wisdom and knowledge to those who are worthy of my information. And the reason why I say that is because, a uh, perfect example, I'm married to Bishop John White, and a lot of people don't know this, spoiler alert, 
Uh, I also manage him. I'm his manager. Wow. And um, he has six churches around the world. Uh, his missions field is Thailand. We feed the hungry daily. Uh, we have plans for veterans and the things that we do. We do a lot of counseling and um, I manage him. And um, so I, yeah, life is a little different now, right now. What was the question, Mark? <laughs> you, 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 your, your, answer, your answer, Abel, it should have been, I want to hang out with Coach Tony and learn more about this show, the sports side of that house. <laughs> so oh, answer, that's your answer, Tony. Yeah, so I I felt I love this picture of you and the bishop. I got a chance oh, to yeah. meet nice. in person last year, and think of when I think of all of the wonderful titles April has: stunt coordinator, stunt woman, actress, uh, mentor. She's a Atlanta, first lady. Yes, I'm She's right. a first lady, coach. Hey, hey Val. Hey Val. It's like uh, my man that was on in Living Color. Hey, I still had time to make you. I got 15 jobs. Still had time to make you. You remember that? <laughs> mm -hmm. I, re I definitely remember that. Um, uh, Tom Mark, one of my favorite actors um, from ah, The Last Dragon. Uh, yes. Mark asked about that. He <laughs> what did he say? What did oh he say? God. He says Tom Mark could do. Could he do his own stunts or could he, he do his own stunts? I'm not sure. Yeah, about he the did. Question. You have to re-ask yeah. that question. He's trying to pull up that karate song as well. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, I. Yeah, and 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 here's the thing, the it seems like stunt when you do it when you're doing stunts. Like that has a that has an expiration date, so then you can switch over to like doing what do you call that stunt coordinating? Uh -huh. Because but you're not the way doing... that I'm trained, I'm trained old school. You start off as a stunt coordinator, mentoring under someone, you okay. a mentee. So you don't okay. just come in as a coordinator. No, you need to put some time in, at least ten to fourteen years under someone. Okay, that's just my advice. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, because then when it comes time to really coordinate, even though you've been coordinating and co-coordinating, boom, you, you're ready. So that's right. so that was my next question that you took. So I was going to ask you, what's your advice mm -hmm. to young folks that are either one coming out of college or in the business trying to come up in a game? What's your advice on getting into the game at a particular place they want to be, whether it be the stunting or any place they want to be in the business, what's your advice to them? Find places to train, be well-versed in everything, anything physical, whatever that may be. Um, I did a lot of history. I studied what black actors are out there that I could stunt double. And so that's where my attention went. And I would focus on getting in touch with those stunt coordinators. But training to me is everything. And being a mentee under someone, cleaning stalls, I clean stalls. I, you know, I, I was at the horse ranch doing things, you know, at the martial arts studio, cleaning the studio and paying. Um, just being present and being around people that are doing that, you know, and in, in whatever city you're in, just finding out where the stunt people, where they're training and be around them. Oh, okay. Because we become a family. You know, we go to each other's birthday parties, we wear weddings, bridal showers. You become a family. And like you said, Val, there is a time that you move on. And when that time comes, prayerfully, you get two parts of the industry as a stunt performer, as a stunt person, you professional, which would be the stunt person, the stunt double, and then the coordinator. And then like me, I've moved in, into producing. Right. Right. So that, that becomes ultimate. Now you, now you can make those decisions. Right. And and here's uh, on stage VP. He says, congratulations, April, for your success. Thank you. Um, as, and, and going on, is there any, I guess, films or projects you would you're looking forward to producing going forward? As I go forward, I would like them to be positive, uplifting, knowledgeable, you know, informational documentaries. Monique Lisa is going to do a documentary on me, um, her and Delano A. Johnson. And so I mm -hmm. I have a, a cousin, Queen Elizabeth Whedon, that I desperately need to get down to <coughs> Tennessee coach and uh, <laughs> film her. So I have some other 
other things too, but I just well, want to let it come out, let, let it happen. Were you mm -hmm. ever, were, were you so, were you ever so busy, April, that you said, you know, like you had a lot of projects, right? To say they're coming in left and right, you're trying to juggle what's, where is there one particular project? You know, like they were asking Usher the other day on his music, was there one song or one thing he did that, you know, he said, yeah, man, I had a chance to be in a group with P. Diddy and a couple of guys, man, I, I didn't think he was going to be good. Was there one particular actor or actress that maybe came to you for a role, whether you were too busy for the role or maybe didn't want to, that you won on and he said, man, you regret not being able to do it? No, never. No. I was able to wow. do it all. Because stunt coordinators knew me and they would let me leave early sometimes. Uh, and then I would replace myself with someone else and go on to another project. So, yeah, no, oh, I had okay. it figured out, Coach Tony. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I I want to make sure that before I I wrap things up that I I mention this woman's name and I want to make sure that I get her name right. Okay. Tony Vaz. Yes. Yes. So why in, in, in Black History Month, I'm thinking about this. You are living, you're legendary. So that's my that's my opinion of you. But someone that has blazed a trail for stunt coordinating and stunt women is Tony Voss. What can you tell me about her? She worked. Actually, there was no pay. Um, she's one of the oldest stunt women in the industry. She also was um, one of the people instrumental for the NAACP award. Uh, she was creator of that. She was a, is a member of the NAACP and she just opened so many doors just by her presence. Yeah. All right. And, I, and just with you mentioning the NAACP awards, I'd like to play something really, really quickly. Uh, this was from 2021. Uh, let me play it for you. Now doing. tonight, as we celebrate the best of us on this historical night, we have a remarkable woman to thank for it all. She moved to Los Angeles in the 50s and worked as an actress and stunt woman in over 50 films and TV projects, but was saddened by the quality of roles given to black actors. So she took action. She joined the NAACP's Hollywood branch and helped develop an idea for an award show that would feature us in the best way possible. She and others fought to change our image, and thus the NAACP Image Awards were born. We're honored to have her here in the house tonight. Please join me in thanking Tony Vaz. Thank you, Tony. Thank you very much. And she got to talk to my man. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm I'm so here, Bow. Him and his mama. Bow, you got I'm, me crying. I'm oh, and the, the reason and this is this is the reason why I'm, I, I, I think about things like this. And this is history, walking and living history. When you have someone that opens the door for um, uh, black men and women in the industry of entertainment, you think of and try to remember and give honor to people like a Tony Voss who literally blazed the trail. We're talking the 1950s. <laughs> Can you imagine yeah. what she had to go through? Oh, yeah. my God. Uh, She's still alive. Exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, this is um, according to her website. She founded and created the NAACP Image Awards. Yes. Um, and they had their first inaugural awards in, in August 13th, 1967. And in 2021, oh, wow. when that happened, after a 50-year-long wait, uh, and of what uh, what they tried to do, they finally gave her uh, President Der Derek Johnson of the NAACP went ahead and they had her recognized and honored um, as the creator of the NAACP Image Awards at the 52nd annual anniversary yes. in 2021. And yes, so that's amazing. where that was fun. So and that was from her website. So yes, Yvette that's Nicole amazing. Brown and Angela Bassett and so many have yeah. done tributes to her. So mm -hmm. thank you, Val. I didn't know you were doing that. <laughs> and that's the stuff right there, right Ava. And that's the stuff right there that gets me so upset. When you know you in these states with no no mention of no name, but you in these states that want to strip us of history, our kids of history, you know, how do you 
get into music and the movies and things of that nature and really get deep in finding help when some of the people that you should know about, you don't. You know, some of the people that are still here opening those doors, you have no idea who they are. And then they're mentioned in the school books in one sentence. And we're supposed to be like, oh, that's his, that's not. Mm -hmm. So that's why I always, like my six-year-old granddaughter, little Skylar, you know, we try to, you know, keep her as close to the end as possible and teach her about, you know, she go down to my family and, you know, know her great-grandmother, grandmother, and so forth and so on. You know, we had a situation with a family reunion and she saw this picture and it went all the way back to my great, great grandmother, the last slave of the family. Wow. And she wanted to know who they were. And I pointed those out and I took a picture with her next to that picture. And the reason was, as she gets older, I can transfer that picture. So now you as an older adult down the road will now have me, and you, but you got your great grandmother's grandmother's yes. grandmother in this photo. Oh, that but is we so don't do beautiful. that. That's yeah. beautiful, Coach Tony. And so I love legacy. that about the show. Legacy, that. right? Legacy. Legacy. Yeah. My legacy. mom was my mom was um my mom was real uh heavy into that. And uh, yeah, my mother too. My mother yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, she too. that was the thing. And so um for anyone that wants to get started in mm -hmm. uh, stunts, uh, mm -hmm. if they want to start working in background work, if they want to yes. have follow that dream and go, you know, I, I want to, I still want to work in Hollywood. I don't care yes. about AI. I, I, I want to write something. <laughs> I want to produce something. Yeah, sure. How would they go about doing? And what is that advice you would give them? If you're in Los Angeles, there's the Array Film Crew, which I'm a member of, and you can join that. Um. Also in any city like Houston, Los Angeles, Atlanta, you need to be with www.actorsaccess.com so you can get your you know your auditions. There's other sites in each city, so that's some research and history that you're going to have to do on your own. Mm -hmm. um, getting in film festivals is one of the best ways to get started. Film festivals, like if you become, oh, if you yeah. want to. Yeah, you want to be an actor, you want to be a composer, you want, but negotiate and say, I want IMDB credits, Internet Movie Database oh, yeah. credits. Am, because yeah. when you get when you get those IMDB credits, bam. But like I've worked for free where I'll do a project when I was starting off. I say and I put it in my contract, I want IMDB credits. Yeah, because uh, Tony, it's 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 a list. I went. It's a lot. I, went to, I saw. I saw. I said. You know, I used I to have a, on a no, on, um, uh, on a clubhouse, um, and I would teach sometimes on there and have guests come on and stuff like that. So, Coach, maybe we need to talk. And well, I, I got something that I don't know. You know, Val may or may not know it. An opportunity for you to research. And uh, another reason why you to get down here in Cashville, Tennessee, and that <laughs> is they are uh, have already planned and they are building right at a billion, see the billion or right at eight hundred, nine hundred million dollar facility here just north of Nashville. They are planning on moving Hollywood to Nashville. Okay. So they are they are already clearing the land and they are making a um, basically like they've got in Hollywood for start doing movies here out of the Tennessee, Kentucky, mm -hmm. Georgia markets. And they are moving some of that to middle Tennessee shortly. So another opportunity, as you say, and that's the things I try to talk to my son about, as me and you were talking about, he's in this industry, is research this stuff early on. Ooh. That'd be the other piece of my yes. advice. Research it early on, yes. get in on the front end. Because yes. if you get on the front end, you never know who you meet. And they may use you, like you said, to take the garbage out, sweep the floor up. And all of a sudden, somebody don't show up and they say, you know, hey, hey mm -hmm. Val, jump in that scene real quick for me. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that you could, you know, speak that direction or act it out. And the rest is history. Yeah. And a lot, of, a, a lot of films are being shot in smaller markets. It's yes. It's just yes. less expensive. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And don't forget, we didn't talk about all this stuff. And don't forget this lady right here is still be on the sports side of it. Good pick on the NFL before we get up out of here. Super Bowl Sunday this weekend. Patrick Mahoney's 
is going to be back up in there again, trying to get him another Super Bowl ring. Of course, with Taylor Swift, yeah, her, man. I think I don't know which one is on the team. Either Taylor on the team, they both or Travis are. Kelsey on the team. They both you know, are. they both are right, right. Like, we'll, we'll, you just, yeah. you just got to watch the game real carefully to see which one going to come out at what quarter. You know, it could be Taylor. We'll, the first we we need to we need to actually we need to ask Kevin live right now while we're here. Yeah, didn't didn't April win? Didn't she guess one of the teams? Yeah, I, in the, I, in the I, Super Bowl? I need to know. I feel like she did. I don't know, Spring. I need to know because she got to be able to beat me. And speaking of April, I got to send yes. a super shout out to my nephew, Juwan Jennings, San Francisco 49ers. Yes. I love my home, but got to get him a Super Bowl ring. So shout out to that. Much fire. Yeah. On so I got <laughs> as many. Oh, by the way, April, you didn't come home. So me and Val got our own thing going on because she got to send me a, a dinner card and vice versa. But I got the 49ers yeah. winning 34 31. And she got Kansas City win in 24-17. So we're going to see about all that. Kansas City, here we come. Uh-oh. Wow. Hey, That's all I be- can tell you, Abel, is make sure you on that dinner train with, with Val. Don't hate. Don't hate. Look, be- what color? What color? What color? What color you got? What color? I, I, yeah. I, I, you know, red, know, red, you know that I was going to wear that red, but see, I, 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 I had to floss Don't out. Don't tell my Rams, though. You know I was a Rams cheerleader, too, so shh. What? Okay, hey, Mark, yeah, was, that, was that back in the Eric Dickinson days? Back in Eric Dickinson days. Mark, Mark Lee is predicting Kansas City is winning thirty-one to twenty-four. Did that sounds I have about a, right. That sounds oh, about right. right. That sounds about oh, right. There you go oh, with hey. Valentine. I'll tell you. I don't hey. want no handkerchiefs. I don't oh, want hey. no buckets of tears. Hey. None of that. And, no, and hey. here's the here's no, another hey. question. Just just on general principle here we go what do we think about this gentleman performing the halftime show what songs you think he's gonna do i'm just curious i'm curious i'm curious. who you think he gonna bring out i think he might bring out Ludacris, little john yes. um i told him jd jd yeah the, uh jermaine dupree um and taylor swift who Taylor Swift? <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> you I'm never know. You. She will be there. She's flying back from Japan, April twelve hours, and the United States government is already working on a special permit. It's never been done in history because they have a parameter that they shut the Super Bowl down in a mile parameter with inside of it. And I was telling Val, she gonna be up in there. They're going to drop her down in a helicopter so she can get over top of the perimeter. She walking in, and when she get up in that joint, us are going to be talking about Taylor, and she's going to come up on the stage. They're going to do at least one song together. I'm just, I'm uh, just, Ursula, I ain't saying I'm just saying. Ursula no. says that if Ludacris and Little John come out, she's going to scream, and uh, Kevin believes that Usher may bring out Justin Bieber. We don't know. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and oh, Mark is is funny. He's saying Taylor is being stalked by some fans, so she can't be on stage. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one thing I do know is Usher, uh, if you want it beforehand and check it out, April, on Friday, this Friday okay. at midnight, Usher okay. drops his new album, oh. Just In Time for the Super Bowl. Okay. Yeah, so okay. all those things were done on purpose, and so that... <laughs> That is that is what it is. Uh, next Monday, Coach is back. I'm just going to put that out there. It is the Pull Up Podcast. It's every Monday. I like Monday. your show, Coach. Yeah. Oh, man. I appreciate I like it. So I tell them to pull up on. They got something to talk about. Pull up on, you know. It's educational as well as informative, which is the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's been. We have fun with it, you know. And yeah. then I even see me looking cool like that. And my guests... It's been very great. I was I was so thankful to Coach Conzo Martin and then double yes. back off with Merle Code and they mm-hmm. just dropped it. Not, matter of fact, April, I had a, a gentleman who never ever watched my shows, right? One of my mm-hmm. one of my uh peers in the basketball industry. And I sent it out and he wanted because he's a big time Coach Martin fan. He loved it. He says, man, just the conversation that yes. you guys had was it was kind of like he said, uh, I got a chance to rewatch the Terry Cummins interview and you and Zoe was like y'all was in the neighborhood and it was just wanted yes. really wonderful. 
And uh, and that's what I try to do. I try to sit just down like be you. you, coach. Just be you. Hey, just hey bro, I don't know how to do. I don't know how to be nobody else but me. You ask that. Nobody can be you but you. <laughs> that team, you better, hey, oh you better God. get that DJ save my life. Hey, like, come on now, oh, man. Oh yeah. And that's the book that's coming up and going to be a segue. On a like a segue. March fifth, I mean, you gave it was a wonderful layup. We're just like the best layup. We could just pass the ball and just do what we're going to do. But definitely go ahead and scan the QR code and check it out. My writing mentor Yay. and April's writing mentor, Monique Lisa Johnson, definitely coached me through. And so, a DJ saved my life. We'll be revealing the cover March fifth, and then. It gets right. released, so I'm excited. So go ahead and support, support. We want to give a major kudos to this April Weeded Black. Man, let me tell you, y'all don't know. This is why you tune in, double up, like uh, like my boy Kale said, double up. This is why you tune in on the Pull Up Podcast on Monday so we can set you up for it like I did with Val, drop off with a nice alley-oop. So she can dunk it on Tuesday night and lose talk on Tuesday with I guess Miss April. She just fire. Don't do don't. don't. <laughs> we'll Tell be back. Love we'll be show. back. We'll be that we'll be back next week talking Super Bowl and definitely yeah. with the pull up and April. And we'll guess see next you. week. I got another guest in the athletic side on our show on Interludes next week, April. Who? Uh young lady that's uh a young woman that's come up in the ranks, like you're talking about, in the athletic side of the house, male-dominated, who's now an associate director of athletics Ooh. at a university, at American University. What's her name? Her name is Patty. So we're going we, to be rock and rolling with her. Okay, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Well, April. Yes. Coach Tony. We'll see you. We'll see you guys on next week. Thank, Thank you, you all for joining Thank us. You, Coach. We're out. Peace. Peace.